Jill Dando, known and loved by millions, has been brutally murdered. The 37-year-old presenter died in hospital after being found shot through the head on her own doorstep. The murder of Jill Dando, the popular British television personality, shocked the nation when the news of it broke on the 26th of April 1999. The premeditated killing outside the victim's house in broad daylight, with no apparent motive other than hatred of her popularity and celebrity, terrified many of those living in the public eye. The police moved quickly to solve the murder. The investigation was announced before the victim was even buried, and at first it seemed that the killer would soon be found. But before continuing we welcome you to our channel The Murder Files where we discuss the most breathtaking, terrifying and strange true crime stories and also we would like to send our sympathies to loved ones and families who fell victim to the obnoxious crimes presented on this channel. Jill Dando was born on 9 November 1961, in Weston-super-Mare, a coastal town in the southwest of England. She studied journalism at university, and after a spell working on a local newspaper, went on to work for BBC Radio and Television. In 1986, she moved to London and began to work for the Central Television Network, becoming well known as a newsreader and then as a host on several popular programs, including the television show Crime Watch. The show featured cases that the police were working on, and asked members of the public to phone in with information to help solve crimes. Crime Watch was an altogether grittier program. She had a serious side, a natural empathy with the victims, calm authority with the audience looking for criminals. So your calls really do count as a result. Little did Dando or her colleagues know that her own murder would one day be featured on the show. By her late 30s, Dando's career was at its height. She had become a famous television personality, and was much in demand as a presenter, appearing in shows such as Holiday, in which she traveled to glamorous, exotic locations to report on the tourist attractions. Her private life was also happy. She had recently become engaged to gynecologist Alan Farthing. Yet all this was to end tragically. On the morning of the 26th of April 1999, Dando left her fiancé's house and went over to her own house in Fulham, West London. As she walked up to her front door, a stranger appeared and shot her at close range. A neighbor heard her screams and opened his window to see a well-dressed man standing by her door. I heard the scream. You heard the scream? I did hear a, a, a scream. Did you hear a man's voice or anything no, like no that? No man's voice at all. And did you hear a shot or did you... Well, there was no well, shots. That's like, what I would say right. was a shot. I wouldn't have thought there was a shot, no. From your assessment, what appeared to have happened to her? She was obviously attacked. And whether she was attacked with a knife or whether she was attacked with some sort of instrument. But um, she certainly... She, she is obviously very shocked what happened and... She was conscious? She was talking? She, was, she, she wasn't conscious when I saw her. What did you do? Dial 999 straight away? I personally didn't, but the people I was with, the two ladies who also live in the street, dialed the number and um, had the ambulance services there within 10 minutes. He then saw Dando lying bleeding on the ground and hurried to help her. By the time he arrived at her door, the man had disappeared and Dando was unconscious. She was taken to the nearest hospital, but it was too late. Jill Dando arrived here by ambulance at 12.30 p.m. Despite all efforts by hospital paramedics, my apologies, ambulance paramedics and hospital medical staff, she was certified dead at 1.03 p.m. The reaction to her murder was one of horror and incomprehension. There seemed no reason whatsoever why anyone would want to kill Dando. A murder investigation, known as Operation Oxborough, was immediately launched by the Metropolitan Police, London's police service. Three teams of detectives, headed by Chief Inspector Hamish Campbell, began the laborious process of interviewing the many people who had come into contact with Dando in the months leading up to her death, particularly those connected with the Crime Watch program she had presented. 
A man was seen leaving from outside number 29 Gowan Avenue and he ran east down this road towards the Fulham Palace Road. A man between late 30s and 40s, white, he was carrying a mobile phone, he was clean shaven and he had dark hair. The witnesses describe him as being well groomed, possibly wearing a jacket or a suit. And anybody who knows that man or anybody else who saw that person out there, we would like to speak to. It was thought that perhaps there might be some connection between her work there which had sometimes brought her into contact with known criminals in her death. Crime Watch itself featured the murder of their erstwhile presenter, asking for witnesses to the crime, which resulted in over 500 people phoning in with information. This is a somber, and for me, a surreal Crime Watch UK. For all of us here, it can be grueling coping with crimes against victims who are strangers. It's been almost unbearable dealing with Jill's death. Jill Dando was much more than a colleague. She was everyone's friend. Crime Watch is poorer without her. But this program was her passion. And now, as Jill helps others, we hope we can do the same for her, for her family. There was also a meticulous forensic investigation of the scene of the crime. A gun cartridge was found, from a type of gun often used by drug dealers and professional criminals, a semi-automatic Browning pistol. This suggested that she had been killed by a hitman, or perhaps a stalker. Information was gathered from the witnesses and a composite of the chief suspect was drawn up. Unfortunately, the witness accounts, camera footage, composite sketch and psychological profile all failed to produce new leads in the investigation. At first, the witness information in the video footage had seemed to offer many promising leads. The police took over a thousand statements, and talked to a total of more than 2,500 people about the events. Three weeks after the murder, there were still no suspects, and no one was in custody. Public pressure to solve the case was intense, so Chief Inspector Campbell was replaced by Detective Chief Superintendent Brian Edwards, and a new team of detectives put on the case. A suspect was taken into police custody, only to be released shortly afterwards, uncharged. It was now thought that, because of the carefully planned, execution-style killing, Dando had been murdered by a cold-blooded professional, not a deranged loner. David Wilson published a report on contract killings. I have absolutely no doubt that Jill Dando's murder has all the hallmarks of a professional hit. The fact it was a single shot, the fact that the gun was in contact with her head, the, uh, the fact that there were uh, the gun casing had been left is not contraindication of a professional hit. Indeed, I have researched uh, many professional hits where the gun itself is left. Um, therefore, that doesn't rule out a professional hit for me, nor the fact that there are witnesses that this happened at the, during the day, or indeed that this was at her doorstep. Everything about this murder screams out professional hit. The police thought they had made the breakthrough when, after close surveillance, 40-year-old Barry Bulsara was arrested at his home on the 25th of May 2000. It emerged that Bulsara was not the suspect's real name, and that he had used several other false names as well. His actual name was Barry George. The trial began on the 4th of May 2001. Barry George's history as a mentally unbalanced man obsessed with firearms, the BBC and with celebrity, came to light. Police had found a picture of George in his flat, brandishing a handgun similar to the one used to shoot Dando in the head. They had also found pictures of thousands of women. One of the major pieces of evidence offered by the prosecution was a particle of firearm residue found by forensic investigators in the pocket of a coat belonging to the accused. The main planks in George's defense were his mental disabilities, which, his counsel argued, would have made him incapable of committing such a crime, and witness reports to the effect that armed officers had been present at the time of George's arrest. Dando's murder. Did you kill Jill Dando, George? No, sir. Do you know the difference between a blank firing gun and a replica gun? No. The jury found George guilty by 10 to 1. After the trial, George's previous crimes were made public. He had convictions for assaults against women, 
and once was found with a 21-inch hunting knife and a 50-feet rope in the grounds of Kensington Palace, home of the Princess of Wales. However, George's supporters were convinced of his innocence of the Dando murder, and after a lengthy campaign his case was referred to the Court of Appeal. Expert witnesses testified that gunshot residue was unreliable evidence, the particle could have come from another source. A re-trial was ordered. When the new trial opened, in June 2008, the judge ruled the particle evidence inadmissible, thereby demolishing the prosecution's case, which then rested solely on witness identification. On 1 August 2008, George was acquitted, and a case the police thought they had solved remains open. Tell me how you feel the moment that that verdict comes back from the jury when they announce, Barry George, you're guilty of the murder of Jill Dando. From a conscience point of view, I knew I hadn't done it. From a factual point of view, as the circumstances of events unfolded, I knew I hadn't done it, and I, it just beggared belief. Barry, can you forgive the Metropolitan Police for prosecuting you? I can forgive, but I can't forget. Sadly, to this day the murder of Jill Dando remains unsolved and with the passage of time there have been also a development of numerous conspiracy theories much to the concern of Jill Dando's friends and families. We can only hope that the killer or killers of Jill Dando will be caught and finally brought to the justice for the crime which affected numerous individuals.